Eliminating single points of failure requires the use of redundancy. If your system must be more reliable than the reliability limit imposed by individual component failure rates, then redundancy is the only way to meet your system reliability goals. Typically, redundancy must be used if you wish to do better than about one critical system failure every 100,000 hours, depending on your system design. Generally, this corresponds to the level of reliability expected of systems that could cause death of a person or catastrophic results to a business. If you're building such a system, you need to make sure that not only do you have redundancy to survive such failures, but also that the redundancy has no single points of failure. That's because even if you have lots of redundancy, any single point of failure component is an Achilles heel for your system. To avoid single points of failure, you need multiple computation paths through your system. Those paths should cross-check each other to catch inconsistencies and thus detect component failures. It is important to realize that two copies of the same software running on two CPUs will protect against hardware failures, but can still, for practical purposes, be a single point of software failure because software bugs will affect both CPUs at the same time. There are three major patterns for avoiding single points of failure. The first is the multi-channel architecture pattern. This uses two or more computers to perform redundant computations and cross-check the results. A common way this pattern appears in embedded systems is the so-called two of two pattern. Two computers called channel one and channel two cross-check their computations and also check the outputs of the other channel. Each channel is designed to be a separate fault containment region. Any mismatch between channel outputs indicates a computational failure. A two of two architecture can be extremely effective at mitigating hardware faults. However, because the same software is running in both channels, the software must, for practical purposes, be perfect by, for example, developing that software to a high safety integrity level. A second common pattern is the doer checker pattern, sometimes called a monitor actuator pair. In this approach, a doer fault containment region performs the primary computation and generates an output to the controlled system. A checker fault containment region is continuously checking the output and does a system safety shutdown if the output is unsafe. You should note that the output could be momentarily unsafe while the shutdown is occurring but in many systems, this is fine because no actual damage can be done in that small amount of time. A doer checker approach can be attractive because the checker can often be built out of simpler hardware than the doer and have simpler software that is easier to get right. Because the doer and checker often are somewhat diverse, that diversity provides an additional argument for independent software failures. However, to argue that diversity provides safety requires significant effort to demonstrate actual diversity between the doer and checker software. The third pattern is a variant of the doer checker pattern and is called the safety gate pattern. In this architectural pattern, a doer computes an output value and sends it to both a safety gate and a checker. The checker opens or closes the safety gate depending on whether the output looks safe. This avoids the momentary vulnerability of a plain doer checker because unsafe outputs are never passed through the gate. However, it does come at the cost of a delay waiting for the checker to complete its check, and also the need to have a safety gate that is in itself not a single point of failure. More exotic and complex patterns can be found in extremely high integrity systems such as flight controls. For example, a multi-channel system with a voter is commonly used, but it's important to make sure the voter doesn't turn into a single point of failure.